welcome to Wellness Wednesday. Thanks for tuning in last week to learn a little bit about smoothie making. And this week we're gonna talk to you about mindfulness meditation. And before we get started, I want to ask you guys a simple question. Do you think counting is hard? Counting as in like one, two, three. Well, in college, I actually learned that counting can actually be pretty hard. And that's because I sat in a class with this professor. His name was Dr. Larry, super cool guy. He was a drummer. It was awesome. And he actually led my class through a mindfulness meditation exercise. And what that was is we sat down quietly with our eyes closed in class and he asked us to count our breath. And it was actually really hard because as we were sitting there, thoughts of tests and craziness were coming in and we even were hearing sounds out in the hallway. And so we've learned through that experience that counting is actually really hard, especially when you're trying to do mindfulness meditation. And basically mindfulness meditation is this exercise we can do to help calm our thoughts and help us to find our present, our present moment. And what that means is that we can be more present and centered in what's going on in our surroundings and in ourself. And it's better than thinking about the future or thinking about the past. And it actually has a lot of really great benefits. With mindfulness meditation, you can actually improve your memory. You can improve your academics. So if you're doing not super well in a class, try this out and see if it helps. It also helps with attention. So if you're finding yourself being distracted in class, if you practice this sort of mindfulness meditation, it can actually help you improve some of those areas. It also can help you be less judgmental about the world, which I can be sometimes, but it helps you kind of find your presentness and your present centeredness, and it helps you get through some of those situations that might be stressful or make you anxious, and it's a really great tool. I learned this when I was in college, and I wish I had learned it in high school, so that's why I'm here sharing it with you guys today, and I'm going to be talking with Sergeant Major Myers in just a second to help you guys understand what mindfulness meditation actually is, so stay tuned. All right, so now we're here with Sergeant Major Myers, and I just want to thank you for taking time out of your really busy day to come and do some wellness practice with us. And today, again, we're doing mindfulness meditation. And so what I'm going to do with him right now is we're going to do a couple questions to kind of get a gist of Sergeant Major Myers' perspective on mindfulness and meditation. And then we'll go ahead and do a practice with him, and then a couple more questions at the end. Um, the practice should be about three to four minutes long. Um, but it will be guided, so I'm going to encourage you all to partake in that meditation with us and kind of get a feeling of what it's like from wherever you're watching. So, Sergeant Major Myers, thank you again for being here. Um, it's exciting to get to see you, and you're all dressed up, which is awesome. <laughs> um, and I just want to kind of get your perspective on mindfulness and what meditation is. And so I just wanted to ask you what your thoughts were when you hear the words mindfulness and meditation. What kind of things come into your mind when you hear that? Uh, well, first of all, thank you for inviting me. I'm glad to be here. Uh, mindfulness to me uh, makes me think about uh, getting a better understanding of yourself uh, or maybe even more like a, getting a reflection or uh, inner reflection of who you are on the inside and being in the moment of whatever you're trying to do. So. That's what I think about when I hear mindfulness. That's what I think about. Yeah. Is being present in the moment. Being present. That's perfect. That's exactly what the focus of mindfulness is, is trying to find a way to be in yourself and find your, your inner peace and calmness and being present in the moment. Um, and so I kind of want to hear how you've heard about mindfulness. What are some things in your life that have allowed you to learn a little bit about mindfulness and possibly use it in your day to day? Um, raising children, uh, that's like been important. I uh, don't uh, no, but uh, seriously, uh, in the military we use it. We use different terminology, different terms, but the practices are pretty much the same. And so there's instances where, as a leader, you use techniques to help you stay in the moment, stay focused in the midst of chaos. Yeah. Uh, and that's pretty much the same thing. Um, there's a lot of self-reflection in the military as a leader because you have to understand what you're doing, where you're at, and, and how you can improve on your leadership. Mm -hmm. um, and so we use that, and then there's always uh, different techniques that we use, especially when coming into a new space or, or getting into a new environment. You have to take time to understand where you are, and we use that technique also. Awesome, do you have any sort of examples that might help us see what you mean by trying to understand the chaos and then putting yourself in moments so that you, you know, in your military experience, we're using that presentness um, as, a, as a tool and as a skill for you? Yes, I think um, you, 
you always in the military we always we always train as we fight that's our word so we train in chaos because we know that we're going to be involved in it um, and so one of the most early moments i can realize i remember using it is uh, like going on a, a training exercise and going from from the outside or going from a road and getting into the woods so once you leave the road and enter into the wood line or in the woods once everyone with you is there you all take a knee Everyone takes a knee, we face different directions, we calm ourselves, we slow our breathing. Um, sometimes you can close your eyes because you know you're gonna be there for a little while and you start to understand where you're at. You listen to the sounds, you get the smells, you, you close off your senses and only be involved in where you're at in the wood line, leave everything else behind. Uh, you do that so that uh, once you become uh, in that environment, when you're walking through, if anything is off or different, you can tell. And so that's a technique that we use that is, uh, again, terminology is different, but it puts us in the same same idea of using mindfulness to know where you are on the moment. Yeah, and it's pretty amazing that, you know, the military might have their own terms for this, but it's still a mindfulness practice. It's still trying to put yourself in the present moment and understand what's around you so that you can take steps that would improve your situation or watch out for danger. Um, so there is a really interesting part of that that we can use in our day-to-day -day lives as, as people who are not in the military. We can be trying to find present moments and understand our surroundings. Um, so that's really, really cool that you've kind of experienced that through a military lens. Um, and I know that a lot of you watching may not have actually ever practiced mindfulness meditation, and it might sound kind of weird, um, but we're gonna actually practice it right now for about three minutes. And so if you guys want to just Put your feet flat on the ground and find a comfortable way to sit in your chairs. And you can do this in your classrooms too, as we're sitting in these chairs right now. And you can just kind of relax yourself. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to just close our eyes for about three minutes. And then we're going to practice this mindfulness exercise. So let me get my timer going. And if you feel any points of tension in your, in your body, just go ahead and find that, that tension and relax that. And make yourself feel comfortable in your chair. And now I want you all to imagine, with your eyes closed, imagine a river. And you're a log sitting inside of this river. And you're floating there, and the water is passing beside you. Now I want you to imagine there are leaves floating down the river. Some of them are flowing quickly. Some of them are flowing much slowly. And as they're passing, they're actually leaving your view. So they pass along beside you and straight down the river. And now I want you to imagine that those leaves are actually your thoughts. And then as one thought comes in, another thought comes in, and it continues to flow down the river with different leaves and thoughts. And now I want you to think about how this leaf, perhaps it's the thought of the air conditioner in the background, or perhaps it's a thought of a test anxiety, or maybe what am I gonna cook tonight for my kids at home? Whatever that thought may be, Allow it to continue flowing down the river, just like the leaves. Allow that thought to leave your view. Just as the leaves, your thoughts can come in quickly and slowly and distract you from your present moment. And so we are going to practice allowing those leaves to flow past us. To do that, go ahead and start counting your breath. In and out. And allow yourself to relax into those, that counting. And remember that every thought and every leaf that passes by as you're counting, you may label it for whatever it may be. A test anxiety, a sound, a feeling, label that thought, and then allow it to flow down the river.
And now you can slowly open your eyes. And notice that the lights have turned off in the room. <laughs> and now we've just completed our moment of mindfulness. Now we'd like to go ahead and, and just do a little summary of how that experience was for us. Major Myers, how, how did that work for you? How, what kind of reactions did you have from that? One, it's, uh, it's really calming, so that was, that was great. Um, and it helped me relax. Uh, and, and concentrating on counting the breaths was allowed me to keep my mind kind of clear. Um, so there wasn't, uh, as the thoughts were going down the river and I imagined them, it kind of cleared my mind. I was only focusing on the counting, which was um, which was really good. And as something happened, or I heard the noise outside where someone uh, slammed the door, or a thing might have been a dumpster, um, it just happened and it kept me. And I just let it go on down, and I kind of concentrated on my counting. And so it kept me real relaxed. And I think that was awesome. That's I thought the li I thought I turned the lights out because I was using like powers, but I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it was our meditation powers no. that turned off the lights. It was just our calmness because. We hadn't been moving for a time period and then the lights didn't go off. So we just brought so much calm to the room. Um, yeah, thank you for, for that reflection. Um, and I'm just curious, you know, high schoolers, you guys are watching, what are some reasons why we as high schoolers and we as people who are working at schools should be thinking about mindfulness and, and um, meditation practices? Look, the uh, I talked to my students today, I told them that uh, the world today is very difficult to navigate. Um, and, as a, and I do not envy high school students at all. I don't envy you at all. Um, there's a lot of things that you are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis that I never had to deal with as a student. Um, and I think that these practices and being able to use them to help you relax and um, calm yourself and focus on whatever it is that you're doing uh, will help you. Especially in the classroom, there's a lot of things going on. You have all these worries at home. You have all these things going on, the social distance but you still have to take your test. And so being able to come into the classroom, take that five minutes to calm down, do the exercises, get ready to take that test, and then open your eyes, test in front of you, you concentrate and knock it out. Uh, it'll be a great help to anybody, uh, but specifically students that are trying to navigate these hard times. It's just, it's just amazing that they're doing it, and this is just something they can have in their toolkit to help them do it better. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with the toolkit part. Hopefully, as, as Sergeant, Meyer, Sergeant Major Myers has mentioned, these are really great practices to bring your blood pressure down, to help improve your academic uh, achievements. That's a really important thing right now in high school. And, and I know that life is crazy right now, but this is a really cool way to just find space in your day about, you know, you only need about two to three minutes. Um, to do it and then maybe you can even bump that up to about 10 minutes a day and work that into a schedule Maybe in the mornings before you get on the bus to come here You can practice this mindfulness maybe on the bus You could try and find ways to really focus in on the present and allow the noises and the thoughts and the worries to just slip down the river So I really thank you Sergeant Major Myers for joining me um, please tune in for a little bit of a summary right now, um, but until then, practice some mindfulness meditations on your own, and then if you have any feedback or questions, you can always come and reach out to me. Hi everybody, welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in with myself and Sergeant Major Myers to learn about mindfulness. Uh, we had a really great time walking through mindfulness meditation and we hope that you can use this tool throughout your life to help you find more peace and improve things like your attention and your memory and your focus. We really want you guys to use this and employ it and hopefully it can benefit you in the long run. Thank you so much again for tuning in and stay tuned next week for our next Wellness Wednesday and we hope to see you guys there. Thank you so much and have a great day.